Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Silent Hunter 5. Terribly sorry for the noise going on in the background. Um, no idea what's causing it. Probably some ships we sank last time. Let's head over. It doesn't really look like this is it, but it could be. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, where we last left off, we were headed for Madagascar to do a mission. <clears throat> However, we got ourselves quite distracted and are now, uh, you know, well, we sunk a bunch of ships and now we're kind of just waiting, uh, reloading the tubes. We only have six torpedoes left, taking a look at things, uh, provided these are getting loaded, which is insane. Uh, we can't go to Madagascar with six torpedoes, so, the question becomes, what are we going to do? Well, we do need to resupply. And it doesn't look like we've got any sort of at-sea resupply available. So, I'm thinking we're just going to have to head back to base and, um... Pick everything back up in uh, Penang. And then head back out again. Um... I'm really tempted to just leave this mission and not do it. I'm tempted to head back and just and just do an end patrol type deal, um, if I'm honest, and see if we can get a better mission than, you know, potentially running ourselves out of fuel. Just not something I enjoy doing. Um, well, let's clear up. Let's clear up the map. And I just want to say thank you guys for posting, wondering where I was. I was on vacation. Um, I guess I didn't mention it. In a Silent Hunter video, I did mention it in Panzer Corps, but I am going to try and remember to mention that kind of stuff on, um, on all videos from here on out. Just because, you know, not everybody watches everything, and that's just fine. I don't really care about that. But, um, yeah, <laughs> you guys have been waiting a while for this episode, so here it is. Um, I'm also saying um a lot, although I think I do that most of the time. Anyway, so I can get used to it, slackers. I don't know why I call these slackers. That's rude. Anyway, we're gonna, yeah, I, I mean, we need to resupply. So, the smart thing would be to head back to base, and the closest base is the one we came from, and I really don't want to do this mission, so I'm thinking we're gonna end it and uh, advance time even further. We've only, we got like less than a year left, or something along those lines. Um,. You know, it's, it's not the greatest go thing going on. Man, I am rusty when it comes to this kind of thing. You take, you know, a week and a half off, two weeks off, something like that. <clears throat> and the brain gets, gets all rusty. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get out of visual range of these transports, which can probably still see us. Uh, we do have six torpedoes, so I mean, I guess we could... Well, yeah, you know what? I mean, we could go after this guy. This is a very big ship. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see. As we're fleeing the location, don't need to burn through battery power that much. We'll go ahead slow. Let's just see if we can't maybe... Get one final lock. That guy is not the one I was looking for. There should be a big guy somewhere. Cause that guy's just a coastal composite freighter. I'd like to go for a bigger target than that. We only have one tube. It is a homing torpedo. So, um, no, oh, modern medium freighter? Where was that guy? Way out there. Not what I'm looking for. Liberty Cargo? Was that the guy? Well, I gotta think, too. Um, one torpedo, probably... Oh, no, that's it right there. Modern passenger liner, five clicks out. No, that is definitely not it. Liberty Cargo. Yeah, you know what? We're just gonna leave these guys and head back to base. I think that's the best bet. Get ourselves a little bit of resupply. And, um... Call it a day, basically. Not with the episode, obviously, but with the mission. Because that's just going to cause me problems. 
So, um, yeah, that's the plan. Good to be back. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys when we get back to port. Or something happens along the way. Or I change my mind. Any number of those things could happen. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys. So, on our way back to port, we, uh, came across a couple of little, 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 little. <laughs> Don't know why I can't get this word out. A couple of little targets. Well, I say little. Um, we need to be just a little bit higher. So, what we got is, let's get this on zero, so I know I'm looking forward. We have got a Fletcher, and then way out there we got another destroyer, probably another Fletcher, and a cargo transport. So let's get ourselves a lock on with that guy. Check our torpedo loadout. We got one homing, torpe homing torpedo left. Tube six. Let's flood the tube. Although this guy should be pretty easy to hit without having to use up that homing torpedo. Once these um, destroyers start getting active, it might not be a bad idea to switch over and use the homing torpedo, perhaps on the guy behind. Uh, in fact, let's just break this lock and see. Those other guys, they're not quite in visual contact yet. So I'm tempted to just wait a little bit on this destroyer. Oh, maybe not. Now this guy could be jucking and jiving, or he could be coming for me. So I think maybe the homing torpedo would be the best bet here. Let's just see. What's he doing? Just kind of um, pulling fancy maneuvers, really. Still no lock on that guy. All right. Well, because he is moving, Let's go ahead, launch that, and then pull our old-fashioned periscope down. Follow this torpedo. Pull in a nice little turn. There's potential here, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, there's always potential. Let's just sit very quietly. Boom! Looks like we hit his engine compartment. Which should at least disable this guy, I'm hoping. So let's see. Engines have definitely stopped. That is good. You will be signaling, of course, now. We can see the communication going on between the two destroyers. One knows he's hit. So they know something's here. Which is just fine by me. I'm concerned if I launch a torpedo now that this guy might stop and it might not hit. But you know what? Is he well he is slowing down, right? He is also getting closer. So um let's see if this'll do anything. My concern, of course, is that it's going to be planning that it's going to continue to move, and yeah, that's exactly what I thought would happen. Now he's pretty much dead in the water, so we can finish him off. And let's just check the other ships. Yeah, that guy's going to be coming in. And that guy might be staying on his normal course. I'm not sure. I hope so. Because what we'll do is we'll just wind up putting 
three torpedoes into that big ship, I'm hoping, and uh, avoiding that last destroyer. That's my plan. So let's go ahead, wait for this guy. Yeah, one knot, that's pretty much a full stop. Go ahead and launch. Get a lock on the freighter. And he should be pulling maneuvers, I would imagine. But, five knots. We should be okay. To, uh... Well, five knots and a big ship. We should be okay with at least one of those. We should get some damage going on there. I hope. So that guy's heading that way. We got two more heading that way. And, uh, you know what? If we wind up hitting that destroyer, that's fine. I certainly won't complain about that. But now we're just, we're just waiting. We're waiting for our torpedoes to do their thing. Not sure how far along my T3 is on this guy. And it should be getting pretty close. And it should be a pretty much a confirmed hit. Whether it's going to be a kill or not, well, you know, that's... That is a good question. Are you kidding me? That's not going to hit. I stand corrected. It did hit. And it sunk it. Perfect. Alright. Well, we got the chance. Let's go deeper. And check the damage on this old guy. Fairly good hit. And that should be going under soon. So now the question is... How are the torpedoes coming along on the freighter? Torpedo miss, sir. I think that'll be the first one I fired at the destroyer. So the next two should be coming in. Like I say, if I hit the destroyer, I'm okay with that. But I'd much prefer to hit this tanker. Or freighter. Or whatever the, uh, whatever it is that we're shooting at. It looks like we could be getting potentially pretty close. That destroyer's officially under. Uh, we'll never find it in the dark. And I think the torpedoes are clear of the second Fletcher. Indeed, indeed. Judging by the hit, we didn't need to send that second torpedo in, but I'm glad we did. Current depth, four, zero. There goes that big juicy freighter. Let's check our kill list. And see, we got a Fletcher, which was 2,300 tons, and a T3 tanker for 11,000 tons. It's quite a lot of shipping this go-around. Without getting anywhere near Madagascar. I'm sure the BDU's a little upset we're not heading that way, but uh, they can't complain about our kill count. It's quite a lot we've had this mission. All right, we're below the thermal layer, and this little Fletcher is all by his lonesome. I think we're going to be safe to uh, to get ourselves out of this situation. We've got our course still set. This was a very easy hunt. They were coming right along, right in front of me, basically, and I appreciate that. Made me happy. Let us uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, rig for silent running and um, 
With us being this deep, I think we should be able to just skirt ourselves past. Without issue. Look at that. Another successful little hunt. And we're on our way back to base. See you guys in a bit. Alright, so here we are. Back in port. And, um... We're well below... Well, not well below, but we're below 50% on our fuel tank. So that means from going from Penang out to this point and back, burned over half a tank of fuel. And when we consider the distance of, like, you know, like here and back, looks closer than here to there. And it certainly is closer than here to there and back. So I really am not sure how I'm supposed to get to Madagascar in the sub I'm in. If I was in a Type 9, I could potentially see it. That thing seemed to have better fuel range yes, uh, than, than this behemoth, that's for sure. Look at this, the way the Albrecht coating is going. It looks like we got Digicam. So uh, there you go, the, uh, the Kriegsmarina doing digital camo before digital's even a thing. Anyway, uh, I had a request a little while ago asking to see some ports, so uh, why not check out Penang and the defenses we've got. There is a destroyer that's kind of guarding the mouth of the harbor out there, and then for fleets or ships that are moored here, we've got a couple of aircraft carriers. We've got uh, what looks to be a bigger ship. I don't think that's a destroyer. We could hop out and take a look, I guess. And then some freighters and, and things of that nature. Let's see, what do we got here? We've got... Some kind of, uh, cruiser? I don't know, with four float planes. That might even be some kind of pseudo-battleship. Kind of like a hybrid. Um, anyway, so that's, that's the defenses of the main port. And you can see most of the fleet that's here, it's just, uh, just freighters and dock. I think they're a little concerned of a submarine. Don't worry, guys. We're on your side. Anyway, let's go ahead and dock, and we're just going to end this patrol. Um, people might be a bit angry, but like I say, I really don't think we can make it to Madagascar. So, BDU, screw you. We still managed to sink 40,000 tons. That's got to be worth something, especially with four warships. In the name of the Fuhrer and the commander of the Kriegsmarina, I award you the Iron Cross second class. So that's another one of them. We've got we've got quite a lot of Iron Crosses. Looks like they're not that upset with us not being able to complete the mission. I think, anyway. June 26th, 1944. Let's check our boat. And uh, what do we... We only got 4,500 renown. Makes me a little nervous. Let's check our torpedo loadouts. Yeah. Not really liking that. Um, because we're going to have to change all those torpedo loadouts. Anyway, <clears throat> you have some medals to give out. And so let's do that, shall we? Uh, front clasp. Front clasp. Front clasp. Good work, Knight Staff. Iron Cross, second class. Congratulations. Second class, congratulations. First class. Torpedoes. Why not? And... Um, deck watch. No, we'll go. We'll give it the other torpedo guy. I like that. Reach the maximum number of officers, so we're not going to be screwing around with that too much. Let's take a look what we can do. What was this? Oh, that was was the snorkel. But apparently, snorkels don't work in the game, so that's fine by me. Is there anything else we can slap in here? We could put another, uh, or a, a three centimeter flak gun there. Whew, that is pricey. Um, but I guess we do need the upgrade. We don't shoot at a lot of airplanes, um, kind of on purpose. So, yeah, that's, what's this? A torpedo powered by the revolutionary Walther Turbine. It will give you long range shots without sacrificing speed. Whoo! Eight kilometer range with a speed of 45 knots. My god, that's quick, but it's 320. Oh, I don't know about that. That seems, <laughs> it seems pretty expensive. I'd love to give that a try, though. I bet that is just super quick. But um, unfortunately, I can't dump enough. I don't have enough renown to dump into getting that fully loaded in the ship. I think we're going to have to do a run or two 
with um, normal torpedoes. What I am going to do, though, is swap them all out for the T3 electric. Oh, right. Okay, well, I am going to do that off screen because that's just going to take tons of time. And uh, I'll be back when we're set and ready to go on our next mission. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we got all our electric torpedoes loaded. It might be a bad idea to run with the all electric, but it worked for me just fine. Silent Hunter 5. Why well, want to work in Silent Hunter 4? Am I right? Right. So that's our sub taken care of. Let's check the leaderboards. Just because I am curious. We're in third place. And we are super freaking close to second place. Herbert Schultz, we'll have no problem getting, you know, 3,000 tons. And really, we shouldn't have any problem getting 10,000 tons. We should be able to beat Otto Kretschmer quite easily. And um, Günther von Boppenberg will be right where he should be, which is, you know... The way things should be. I don't think there's anything else we really need to check. I guess we could, you know, maybe change our home base. Let's see. We are currently signed to Penang. Patrol zones, North and Northwest India, East India Ocean. Available options for transfer. So we could go to Singapore. We could go to Batavia. And we could go to Surabaya. So many choices. Um, I wouldn't mind getting out of Penang, just so we don't wind up going further west. East Indian Ocean, Western Australia, Philippines apparently includes Madagascar, whereas Batavia, um, you know, the so southern coast of Africa, that's not, that's not Madagascar. I'm thinking Surabaya. East Indian Ocean, Western and Eastern Australia, and Indonesia... We should see a lot more action out there. So I think we're going to switch. We're going to switch to Surabaya. Transfer successful. That's all I wanted to see. Still June, 6th, still June 26th. That's not bad. Let's get our mission to Von Babenberg. Reach the designated position in grid quadrant. Way the frick out there again. Why are you sending me there? I've even transferred far away so we don't have to go to Madagascar and you send me back there again. I'm not going. I can't make it there. I can't make it to where you're sending me. Especially not now that we're starting in Surabaya. This even further. <sighs> this game. This game series and sending me places I can't go. All right, let's check the map. So here we are in Surabaya, and there is our objective. Way over there, we can't make it. There's no refueling, there's no docking. <sighs> we should have transferred to freaking Batavia. At least we would have been closer. <sighs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to Batavia, we're gonna refuel, and then we're gonna try and make it there, because I have a feeling the game is not gonna give me any other option. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get there. I'm not even gonna get there, and the game's gonna turn around and say, you know what? No, we got a new place for you to go. Head this way. To freaking, you know, Wellington. This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, okay, so that's the plan. Head to Batavia, refuel, and then make the journey. I mean, I guess that's kind of closer. It's more of a straight line, so that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the crazy plan that we're on. Here's hoping everything goes swimmingly. Anyway... Leaving a new port. Nice to see the Albrecht coating has not been improved. I guess I gotta load a fresh one on each time. Which, uh, you know, it is a bit of a pain, but, uh, at least our submarine's looking tough. It's, it's, it's looking like it's seen some action on the sea. The good old Isonade making a name for itself. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna refuel and I will stop. There's probably not gonna be anything of interest in the Jawa Sea. So we'll see, um, we'll see what we can see on our way to Madagascar. See you guys in a bit. So just to give you guys an idea of the fuel consumption, 
We've used up 11% of our fuel going from here to here. <laughs> Granted, that was going at half speed. So, um, you know, if we're just, if we're careful with our fuel consumption, it should be okay. Refit. We should be back to basically 100%, which is good. Um, we don't need that one anymore. So let's head on out. Basically, like that, I think we'll be okay. And we will go slow speed ahead. That should keep us going at about 10-ish knots. So we shouldn't be burning through the fuel too badly. And, um, yeah, that's going to be our best way to get there. Probably have to utilize some underwater travel time and um, the Walther Drive to get there, which sucks. But, uh, hey, it is what it is. So uh, we'll see you guys if something exciting happens on the journey or when we get there. See you in a bit. All right, so a bit of a sit rep. We're not quite at our objective yet. And our fuel is getting pretty close to halfway. Well, that makes me nervous because, you know, if we use up more than 50% of our fuel getting there, how are we going to get back? How are we going to operate in this area? So, what I'm going to do is switch over to the Walther Turbine, which I believe I can use on the surface. And... Yeah, it doesn't look like we're dropping any diesel fuel. I wish I could see this clearly instead of it just being a um, bar. But you can see now we're, we've used up about half of our uh, turbine fuel. So we got a little bit closer. But uh, this is still going to be a little bit of a, of a hairy low fuel light situation, especially if they want us to hunt around here. So, yeah, um, hopefully we're able to make it back to resupply. Because um, really, we got, we got no, we've, we've got no margin of error for the hunting. So this makes me worried. That's, that's the sit rep. Oh, Guntram von Babenberg is looking at the fuel light and is concerned he's been here before and um, doesn't necessarily want to repeat of the good old Columbia incident, if you will. So, um, we're going to get there and then hopefully they tell us, hey, come back home. That's my hope anyway. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. See you guys in a bit. Alright, so we've arrived. We have 54% of our fuel remaining. They want us to patrol for 48 hours. So, we're just going to sit here for 48 hours. And then hopefully, the mission will pass. Son of a bitch. Well, while we're here, let's see if we can't get a shot off. Shall we? Maybe about there. I think that'll put us three kilometers out. Ish. That should be good enough for a shot. Provided we get there. Uh, I am concerned about using battery power because obviously uh, it takes diesel to refuel it. Or it takes diesel. Yeah, well, yeah, it takes diesel to refuel your batteries. That's precisely what the case is. Yeah, let's bring that up. Put it on zero so we know we're looking in front. And it should be coming from the left. 49. Way out there. It's a fishing trawler. I do like hitting fishing trawlers, but... I can't think of a bigger waste of a torpedo this far out than hitting a fishing trawler. 
So I'm not going to. Yeah, there it is there. It can do its thing. I don't really care. We're just going to sit here and wait. Stop the engine. And, uh, yeah, let's hope that fishing trawler didn't see us and reports back. I'll be back when we're done our 48-hour quote-unquote patrol of sitting around doing nothing. And uh, hopefully we'll be head back home. See you guys in a bit. All right. A little bit of a situation. We don't have a periscope anymore. And, um, yeah, we got bombed by an aircraft. Uh, we were under. So that's a thing to remember. But, um, yeah, things aren't looking all that hot. If we take a look at our systems... We got a lot of damage. We took some serious, serious systems damage. No hull damage, so I'm not quite sure how we're leaking, but we are. So that sucks. Um, and yeah, I was I was under. Granted, I was only 15 uh, meters under, but I certainly was under. Thankfully, no hull damage, but we've uh, we've got a situation. That's for sure. It doesn't look like we're sinking too badly. So, um... Yeah, it's just imagine a matter of getting the damage control team to do their thing. And, uh... Hopefully, we'll get through it. Radio room is certainly filling. Let's get to the surface. And, um... <laughs> hope that plane doesn't come back for us. That is quite an awful lot of flooding in the radio room. Can we take a look? Unless this isn't the radio room, that doesn't look too bad. Can't go through there. You boys keep up the good fight, alright? And, uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get this sorted, and uh, we can just, you know, return home. It's kind of the plan. Um, we'll sit here for as long as we can. Well, we're on the surface, so that shouldn't be a problem, gentlemen. Let's just get the pumps working, and we'll get home soon enough. All right, guys. See you in a bit. All right, considering how much air attack I'm under, we can't hang around here any longer. We're headed home. Uh, we got the damage control control team sort of working away, but uh, well, at least we got the flooding kind of back under control, and um, yeah, we should be okay. <clears throat> but we gotta head back. We gotta head back and at least do something. We can't we can't hang around here. And, uh, yeah, it concerns me because, um, I don't want to freaking fail a mission again, which is not good. I think if you fail two in a row, that's it for the game. So, fuck. We'll never dive quick enough. Belay that order. No, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. The plane's gone. Just keep ourselves... On the anti-aircraft guns, please. And, uh... Hopefully we'll just, we'll be able to, to make it home in one piece. I'm not, I'm not hopeful. But, uh, well, I'm hopeful. Anyway, it's kind of a tense, hairy situation. That I just want to get out of. That's, that's what's going on there. So, we'll see you guys when we get safe. See you in a bit. Alright, so we lucked out, uh... Taken so long to get out of there. We've uh, actually completed the mission and got a new one. Make our way to grid quadrant LU-54. Patrol the area aggressively and sink 5,000 tons. So that's good. That's not good. Um, that's dumb. There's, there's, there's no way we can do that. We, we don't have the fuel. We don't have the ability to to actually patrol those areas so we're just gonna go home and end the mission again and hope the next time they don't send us to freaking madagascar when we should be you know maybe in this area that would be great <sighs> anyway i'll see you guys when we get back to port see you in a bit 
So we've got some new problems. Uh, as you can see, Isanade has a hole in her. Which is not good. We've got a destroyer hunting us. And one of the big problems we've got at the moment is the fact that... I don't have a periscope. Periscope's been damaged. So we can't fight back. With a big hole in the hull. We're taking on an awful lot of water. With this destroyer ready and waiting for us. On the hunt. Two of them, in fact. There's not much we can do. We can see we're dropping down to 200, which is probably just a case of we're not able to control the depth that our submarine goes. Probably not because of, you know, the massive hole in our hull. So let's stop our engines and let's set our depth to zero. Gonna be taken on water, but perhaps, perhaps, we can, um, why aren't the bulkheads top priority everywhere? I don't care about a freaking torpedo computer if I've got holes in this ship. We'll see if the crews can get those repaired, but I'm pretty doubtful. Especially with, um, so many destroyers hunting us. So we'll see. We'll see if we can balance out at 60. We're below the thermal layer. Who the heck? We're under attack, sir. I'm well aware crew. We've got a repaired bulkhead. That's a step in the right direction. I'm wondering if we've got any forces nearby that we could call in for assistance. Just scout planes. They won't be too much help. We are passing the thermal layer. It looks like we're coming back up, so let's stay at 60. Well, maybe 60 is not a good idea. Let's go a bit deeper. Let's go to 100. I am concerned, of course, with the state of the hull, that uh, the pressure at 100 meters might be a bit too much for us. Passing thermal layer. But we'll see. Anyway, I have a feeling we've got the flooding under control. Well, maybe we don't. I'm aware we have flooding, gentlemen. I'd like us to concentrate on patching the holes in the ship before we do too much else. How bad is it down here anyway? It's not looking that bad. I guess at this, this moment in time, it's just a question of, can we go deep enough to, um... To not sink is basically the concern. <laughs> Can we go deep enough to not sink? That sounds crazy, but it's kinda, kinda true. Um, we wanna make sure we don't get hit by any more depth charges. And, um, man, I'm tempted to... Yeah, they got our depth probably zeroed in. So what I'm gonna do is just tell everybody to go to silent running. And we are still going deeper, which is not good. Still, we got our damage control team doing their thing. 
And they are working. So hopefully we can get out of this situation. I'm going to let this roll for a bit, see what goes on. And uh, yeah, I'll be back when something exciting happens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can no longer see the Isanade. <laughs> We're 270. We've got no fuel. We can't control our depth. Water's rushing in like crazy. I think this is the end of the Isanade, ladies and gentlemen. I'm highly doubtful we're getting out of this. That's the end. This is how Guntram goes down. Not even in a position to uh, to fight. And all because we got sent to Madagascar. That's what I'm blaming it on. Leaving me in a position to have to, by the design of my ship, go in basically a straight line uh, from home port to the location to hang around on the surface. Uh, perhaps I didn't need to hang around on the surface. The, uh, the air attack was probably my fault, but uh, by that time there re really wasn't much I could do. And I had submerged, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't quick enough and that's it's probably my own fault, but that's, um, that's it. There's the end of Guntram. In the name of the Fuhrer and the commander of the Kriegsmarina, I award the U-Boat War Badge to Cor Corvetten Captain Von Babenberg, August 25th, 1944. An example to admire for all aspiring commanders, you would have made a great leader in the post-war Navy. Well, guys, that's that for that. And what does this mean for the future of the channel? It means Silent Hunter 3, of course. Which, um... The, oh, I haven't had a chance to even play a practice game, so I've got my work cut out for me before next weekend. We'll see if I can get something up this weekend. I don't know. We'll see how my schedule works out. One thing though, with um, Silent Hunter 3 being basically the same time frame as Silent Hunter 5, what I'm going to need for you guys is the name of a new U-boat captain. Because obviously the adventures of Guntram von Babenberg and the crew of the Defiance, the Columbia, and the Isanade have ended at the bottom of the Indian Ocean, really. Um, you know, we're going back to 39. We're going to need a whole new fresh start, a whole new series of uh, U-Boat adventures. So let me know what would be a good U-Boat captain name. Uh, we'll need a name for the ship, too. For the first... I guess it's not a ship, is it? It's a boat. We'll need a name for the new U-Boat as well. But uh, we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll get into that at a later date. Um... Kind of a bit nervous, Silent Hunter 3 has a bit of a reputation in the subsim community for being the best subsim out there. And if you've followed me from the beginning of this adventure to today, you know that I'm really not much of a subsimmer. Well, I don't know, I've been doing this for over a year now. Perhaps I'm a bit more of a subsimmer than I give myself credit for. But, um, yeah, that, that game, it's got me intimidated, it's got me a little bit nervous, but I'm excited to try it. And... I guess that's it, guys. Uh, thumbs up if you'd enjoyed the Silent Hunter 4 series. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching. 
and we'll see you next time.